Hi, it's Larry here, Xboxes, Major Nelson. Welcome to the show, the Xbox Podcast, the official Xbox Podcast, but it's not really official until I do that. Ah, it's official. Hi. Hello, Jeffrey. <laughs> Good I was like, you. I have no idea. Every week I'm like, I have no idea where you're going with this, but it's you're just you're just introducing me. And it just but, happens. Um, and it just happens. So uh, good to see you again. It's another week, another week. Thanks. You notice anything uh, different about me? Uh, uh, yeah, that looks great. The headset. I, I, I see the headset. I see the brand. The Rare? Xbox, yeah. Xbox wireless. Oh, you've got yours too? Xbox wireless headset. Here it is. Uh, we 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 got a great interview later on. We're going to interview the engineer, one of the engineers behind this device, and you're going to learn how it works really well with your Xbox One, your Xbox uh, Series X or Series S. Uh, so we'll talk about that later. Do you have anything you want to say about this? Or your computer, because oh. right now I've got this connected to my laptop, which is you know processing and going out to you. I'm using it for listening. We have a sort of a more studio uh, quality mic, so I've, I've, I'm using the mic uh, for this mic. To, to speak to you here, but listening through here, it sounds great. But the awesome thing is, is I'm also at the very same time, you I'm synced to uh, my to, Xbox. To Jeff's right is his, is his console. So he's actually looking at yeah. the console. Right. And I can hear it. And then I can use the, the sort of left balance meter to, do I want to hear you louder? Or I don't want to tune you out and or go back you. to playing Dragon Quest. And I shouldn't have presented myself with that that choice because is, is that what you're playing? I have right? something to think about. Oh, let me let's see. Let's let's go to full screen so you can oh, yeah. see that. So is that better? Oh yeah, yeah. So these rotate. Uh, volume is over here. That's yeah. my right ear, and then on the left side, you feel like a nice little niche. And I think this is what really helps this this tactile response. You're going to talk to the engineer. I'm sure they're going to talk about this. Yeah. When I turn it in one direction, I hear. I really emphasize the chat to the point where I can completely remove game audio. And I can do the opposite here. But if you want that balance, when I first put them on, I don't remember where I let off. I can find like a nice little groove you can, you here that it, yourself it lands come on. Back, right? Exactly. And from that point, I can balance and, and figure out where, where I want to be. Uh, mute is back here. In. You dial it in. Exactly. Yeah, so so uh, really big fan. They have great noise. Um, they're not noise canceling, but noise isolating, yeah. uh, which is, which is a, really good. Sometimes a, noise cancellation. Yeah. Oh, go on. No, oh no, I'm great... talking about this. I'm just like, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a client. I'm, I'm not the engineer. So I should shut up and let that person talk yeah, about it. So we have a great, we have a great, we're going to talk about the Xbox wireless headset later on in the show. We've got a whole interview, a demo. We're going to walk through what it looks like on the console. So don't even worry about it. It's going to be great. I know you'll love it. That's Jeff. awesome. In fact, I, I do. It. So just so you know, it is out next week. You're going to start to see, uh, Media and creators uh, talking about it uh, next week as well. Um, it, it seems to be hard to get right now. I, I think it's currently sold out, but um, one of many exciting things to talk about this week. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. I haven't seen you all week. It's true. We, um, you never brought that Mustang by here, which I was a little I know, I know. heartbroken I feel, I feel about. Ter- I feel terrible about that. I was supposed to bring the Mustang by to see you, and it just. It, go, check out my Instagram for all the. I got a lot of people. I, I told you, I got a lot of people pinging me about that Mustang videos that I put three or four up. People loved it. Yeah, I was reading um, that it actually had put a dent in, or the, like from a market share perspective, like Tesla is, is sort of the undefeated number one, sure. uh, you know, electric vehicle in the U.S. market. But the the Mustang came in really strong and uh, and was you know taking away some share there. So I think it's good. Uh, you know, I I, I love uh, first of all these are you know, cars that are built here. I remember when I got my, uh, my Volt and, uh, I'm sorry, my Bolt, my Chevy Bolt and talked about it on the show. Someone, a listener said, Hey, I helped make that car. Yeah. That's just, that was just really cool. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I, I really, uh, plus there's just a lot of advantages to, to electric and the fact that they're becoming more accessible to more people is, is awesome. So, uh, also it just looks really cool and I wanted to drive it, Larry. I know. I feel bad. I'm gonna. I'm gonna see if I can get Ford to let me borrow it again for the week. I fit, you and I tried to get together. You were busy. I was. It just. It's amazing. We're, we live so close, to, and we say we live about a dozen miles apart, but we still can't seem to connect. So I feel bad. No, I no, feel bad. it's fine. There, uh, look, there's a whole pandemic. There's, a, but by the way, a lot of gaming news this week. You can see I've been playing a lot of games <laughs> over here, and the one I got to tell you, should, should we just talk about this one? Because this one just right before we started recording the show. This one, uh, this this one happened, and this is Overwatch. Yeah. So yeah. this is this is really kind of cool. I don't know if you if you want to bring this up, but uh, why don't you bring it up, and I will I'll, I'll go ahead and talk about what the news is. 
Sure. So uh, specifically with Overwatch, uh, so we're seeing just lots of games optimized for Xbox Series X and Series S and take advantage of the the horsepower that these new uh, next gen consoles have under the hood. And uh, Overwatch has done so, which is really cool. So a new patch released uh, this week on all platforms Ooh, look at and this. there you go there's the option so you now have the the ability to toggle for these these different uh resolutions and frame rates so you might look at this and go with resolution and balance like why would i choose 4k right. over over balanced you know which is 1440p but uh it, there's image quality versus resolution and then where I know you can take advantage of this, Larry, uh, if you have a TV that is capable of broadcasting 120 displaying, frames per second. But displaying 120 frames. Displaying. Look, this is why you're the AV guy. I, I'm sitting here in 60 hertz land. Uh, both the I Xbox Series S can't, can't and Series X are both capable. I can't see I know, right? I feel like a, I'm a slideshow. I'm like stop motion animation here in 60 is, frames is a second. Is that a real player you're using? <laughs> I, that's, uh, I'm using the uh, WinApp video visualizer. So yeah, uh, you could, so 120 Hertz for both Xbox Series S and X are capable. One is, of course, the X is on a higher resolution, 1440p, which yeah. you have there. And uh, look, I love hearing these conversations about, um, you know, what people prize more. They, do they value frame rate more? Do they value resolution and, and uh, the, the image quality uh, more? It's your choice. You know, so go with go with what you want. This is interesting because I'm actually going into the practice range here, which I'm in. Oh, yeah, my, I pick Farah, you know, my Farah. But I can actually on my I have an LG TV, and on the LG TV, if I hit this, here's a little secret: if you have an LG TV, a newer one, you can hit the green button a few times, and then in the upper right hand corner, I don't know if you can. See, yeah, you really can't see it. Um, you you've got a, a rather large knock in there, Larry. Oh, okay, it's over there. It right. actually pops up and tells you, and you can see that I'm running it. 4k 120 tells you all of it right there so that's a little that's a little uh little lg hack so I, i'm sure other tvs nice. do this as well but i just have I yeah. just, this is what i have so there you go that's yeah good. we haven't played in a while but i know just last week we were talking about getting back into it uh because i know we, we're all sort of jumping into our our different games and i we play apex together uh yeah. but then some of the uh we used to have like a really big uh overwatch crew and we, we could did. run a full six and those were good, really good times. And we've sort of like delved into different games since then, but kind of, uh, well, we should we, go we, back to it. We bifurcated, I believe is the proper term. Wow, it's for corporate America, Larry. We've got, uh, you know, so we, you and I have been playing a way out still after that interview last week. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> so. I'm glad you you figured out, because that was the time to figure out the uh, the the curse word. The uh, bleeping. Bleeper, but the bleeping. Yes, exactly. Uh, so that was pretty, you should just like bleep me randomly from time to time. And I, you know, I probably deserve it. I think that's a, a sequence on Jimmy Kimmel where he'll bleep things that are not actually, bleepable. Uh, um, yeah, yeah like bleepable it. and they, it sounds funny. So yeah, okay. yes, exactly. All right. Enough of that. It's probably killing someone's ears and I'm sorry. <laughs> No, it, it was it was a respectful level. So, we, hey, so big. You, do you want to go through some news here week. since we're since we're kind of we kind of just kind of drifted into the news space? You know, we could talk about what we're playing, but this is not your ordinary week. This no. is <laughs> this is nothing even close to it. This is this is the week we welcomed Bethesda into the Microsoft family. Yes. And got to say, it feels it feels pretty awesome. Um, as soon as this. Um, was finalized uh, earlier this week. I got to have like my first email with uh, someone who does very similar work to what I do. Hi, Sean Baptiste uh, uh, over Sean? at Bethesda. I've known yeah. Sean forever. He used to be at Harmonix. He worked at Harmonix. Yeah, yeah exactly. So He's worked at a number Sean. of different places. Oh, I didn't know that. And, and uh, there was a great, uh, a great video that came out uh, earlier this week where you got to meet a lot of these different teams. And I got to say, I've been a huge fan of certain folks like um, Harvey at Arcane, uh, it's, it's just really awesome. And I'm like, wait, we, it's dawning on me. Like we, we work with, with him and his team now, Shinji Mikami, Tango Gameworks in Japan. I mean, like if you look, if you look up Shinji Mikami's resume, you're like, oh, wait, these are like all time classic games that, that he worked on and, right. and we get to, we get to work with him now. And so it's just been, it's like finding out you've got this long lost wing of the family that, uh, happens to be awesome and we're just now going to get to start you know did we just become best friends that's like sort of that feeling there anyway you can see the whole post that uh that 
Phil put up, Phil Spencer put up on the on Xbox Wire, and it's. I mean, look at look at look at those. Just look at the look at the some of the the images there and the iconography and the franchises that we are, that are now part of the family, and it's it's pretty cool. It's it's very cool. I'm really excited to, about it. to stay to to say this. I think I should change my name to Jeff Wolfenstein just to to honor this arrangement. I think that, and I'll change mine to BJ Blaskowitz. I uh, major major Blaskowitz. I mean, you have as. Uh, I mean, it's about as hard to spell as Herb is. It, it's to be true. honest, <laughs> it's, it's, true, it's much longer, but people people misspell them each at similar rates. That's how you spell it, right there. <laughs> right there. Um, yeah, so so Bethesda, uh, Bethesda, yeah, go, go watch on. The, go, I was going to say, go watch the Bethesda. Um, uh, the Bethesda uh, uh, video this week. And also, by the time this airs, there's another really, really cool roundtable up that is going to mm -hmm. air or that has aired uh, with Phil and some of the folks there. And just if Phil and some of the team went out and Aaron went out to, to Bethesda on Maryland on the East Coast of the U.S. and kind of chatted with them. So you, you got to watch that as well. It's about I saw it. It's, uh, it's about an hour. It's over an hour. It's amazing. So check yep. that out, too. Yeah. By now, you've probably seen it. But if not, it's just really cool to meet a lot of these these uh, folks from different studios around the world uh you know now for the first time we're working with teams in japan we're working with teams uh, uh in france in texas in um in in lots of different places around the world obviously in uh, in maryland so uh I, i'm just over the moon super excited but what does that mean for you now well how, what how it means is there there are now uh 20 bethesda games from some of these just iconic franchises as part of Xbox Game Pass. So uh, there were different amounts in different places and some had been in previously and have come back. Well, now there's 20. And so I'm just looking through this list. Um, you know, the Dishonored games, uh, Definitive Edition for the first one. That was such a great game. And Dishonored 2, which I, I need to uh, I need to finish. If you're a Game Pass subscriber, thank you. The value of Game Pass just went like, boom. Uh, if you're not a Game Pass I, subscriber, is, what yeah. are you doing? What are you doing? You know, I was reading my my favorite Swedish newspaper, Aften Blade, and they were just talking about it. And they were talking that it is such a great were, deal. Were you, as were, you, were you reading that over your morning Google Blitz? I, is is a Google Blitz a thing? Because I don't know. I mean, a Google is right. Uh, your your morning helping. We'll just leave it at Sardines that. and sour cream. Fish for breakfast is highly underrated, Larry. I know, um, I know. You know, we have our pancakes and our eggs and our biscuits and those are well, awesome but breakfast around the world <laughs> i know exactly we should not be we should never be be looking down at anyone else's cuisine no. so um the doom the doom games uh and we're talking everything from like doom 1993 which uh i mean i had a lot of great memories with that one all the way up through doom eternal which is it just, defined, which is just it phenomenal the genre in many ways a lot of these define the yeah. genres i mean fallout yeah. Morrowind, Oblivion, Skyrim, ESO, and then we have The Evil Within, which I have never played, but I probably should. Yeah. The Fallout game, Fallout Four, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout Seventy Six. I played, I played so much Fallout Three. Like I was, I mean, I I, I told the story many times. I was filing bugs mm -hmm. with those guys, and I was I was I completed everything. I mean, I was sending emails to Todd, and I I just I love it. Fallout Three, Fallout Four, loved them all. Of course, Vegas. So it's 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 just. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. This is a, this is an amazing time to be a gamer and to be part of Xbox and and to be a Game Pass subscriber. More importantly, yeah, a game that we played a lot of uh, just about two years ago. I want to say in the spring of twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen. Jeez, uh, Rage Two. Yeah. Really, really enjoyed that uh, that game. That's part of Game Pass. Uh, and then the Wolfenstein uh, titles, uh, Wolfenstein: The New Order, which is phenomenal. The Old Blood and Young Blood. Um, so we have old, all the bloods are are there. So um, I forgot about uh, prey. Now, I forgot about prey too. We talked about it, and I'm personally very excited. Is that achievements are coming back into the Xbox app, uh, and that is uh, by popular demand. Thank you for speaking up. It's one of those things that uh, we're testing this month, well, clear, and uh, with and a limited I, set of players. When it was missing, you and I said, oh, "Wait a minute, folks!" And you, I sent you some of the emails I sent to the team. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, I think I sent you a couple of emails on that, but uh, you know, it's coming. The the, the reconfigured Xbox app is amazing uh, in a number of different ways, especially for you know uh, setting up a new console and things like that. So it'd be great to have achievements coming back into that. 
And uh, there's just a number of other settings here. Um, a new way to manage your subscriptions and managing your game experience. And, uh, you know, you can choose what to install and uh, a lot of other things like that. So you're going to want to take a look uh, on Xbox Wire at the Xbox update rollout uh, uh, post from Jonathan Hildebrandt. And that went up this week. Jonathan, great guy, runs, runs that team over there. Thank you, for, uh, thank you for that update, Jeffrey. That's good stuff. What's going on back here? Did I launch a game too? Apparently I did. It looks like, uh, Far Cry. yeah, I think that's uh, Far Cry. Is that yeah. Far Cry 4? That's Far Cry 4 that you and I, you and I, of which you and I played <laughs> forever. We had so much fun in that game. Such a good game. Such a good game. <laughs> that uh, Troy Baker. With the sniper was so OP. <laughs> mm -hmm. One of the best bad, I know a lot of people really loved Voss from Far Cry 3, and I totally get that, but Troy Baker and Far Cry 4 was just phenomenal yeah. and had a lot of personality for for uh, an enemy and the endings were really cool on that one that was one where you definitely wanted to see it through a number of different we ways had a good time with that one that's that's got that's got really the, uh, frame rate boost by the way that's why i've been loaded on exactly and i actually loaded it back up and i was like well maybe i'll play through some of the stuff i i didn't finish in that game and i realized no i played everything in that game i played the dlc i think there was like a yeti dlc Oh, that Yeti one was fun. Love me some Far Cry. Yeah, yeah. And there was something where I think you would sort of, you had to, you were dropped off in a tower and you had to make it to a destination by any means necessary as quickly as possible. And I remember I had done that too. All right. What else we got there, Jeff? Before we get too far yeah. into the show, I know we, we had talked about By the way, last the timer week. says 20 minutes, so <laughs> okay. we're pretty far. Into Might be a long one, right? So... Last week, we had talked, it was the first show of March and that uh, Xbox is celebrating International Women's Day. International Women's Day was this past Monday, but there's content and uh, celebration of Women's History Month taking place all week. Yeah. We have a great blog post that details everything uh, over on Xbox Wire, uh, written by Jennifer Lane, the uh, Turn 10 Studios design director, and she's the uh, co-lead of uh, Xbox's Women in Gaming. I, the one thing I want to point out uh, as something that is coming up next week and is something that, I, that I, I've that i helped um, support is uh, stream takeover. So yeah. we're, we're doing programming on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Xbox all month long, but there's going to be, we're going to be highlighting select creators uh, throughout the week and to tune into them, you're going to be introduced to some new Xbox creators uh, on Twitch playing some fun games. And uh, I would say if you can, welcome them uh, make them feel loved as part of the Xbox community and some really good people on there. I may actually be joining one of them uh, oh, to play some Apex. We're surprise. talking about it. Uh, Lena, uh, Lena Madrid uh, from Strawberry 17. Phenomenal oh, we player. Play We've played, uh, we used to play Overwatch yeah, and we, we also used to play heck of a sniper, as I recall, and also uh, played uh, a number of other uh, shooter games because... She's very good. She's carried us. So she's going to be streaming as part of this and a number of other great folks joining us throughout the week, usually around at 11.30 a.m. Pacific. So if you're during your work day, Two you're breaking Eastern. classes, whatever it is, exactly, uh, pop on over to uh, Xbox uh, twitch.tv slash Xbox and uh, say hi. hi. It would be, I would appreciate it. I also want to thank uh, our good friend Maxi Graff, who hosted the Xbox podcast this very show earlier this week for International Women's Day with a... Uh, Gabrielle Ponce from Turn 10 and Sahir from Minecraft and Jen Panettone, the head of Xbox Social Good. Go check that out. It should be in your feed if you subscribe anyway. If you like and subscribe, you probably already saw it or listened to it. So thank you. Uh, thank you to those folks for, for hosting it. It was, it was a lot of fun to see them. We should absolutely have them by more often. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, the, the door is always open. The door is always okay. open. So what, where, what do we got next, Jeffrey? What do we have next? So this is something that... Uh, actually will lead into one of our guests. Uh, something that has been a requested feature is to know when you're playing a game or you're about to buy a game, uh, what languages are supported? And is it a language that is that I speak or prefer to engage with in, in a game? And you're going to be able to do that. Joining me today is Brianna Roberts, who uh, works on the Xbox Store, which everybody uses every day to download games and buy games. Brianna, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. 
We got, we got some cool stuff to talk about. You had a blog post that went up earlier this week on Xbox Wire, and I want to talk about that because th there's some, some little changes that some people really may enjoy in the Xbox Store. Tell us about them because they're kind of cool. Yeah, absolutely. So the feature is called supported languages. And basically what this means for our customers is they can see whether or not a game has localization support before they purchase, before they acquire that. So it's awesome from a from a choice standpoint. They have that power to know that information before they actually grab that game. And it's interesting because I'm actually I'm actually going to open it up right here. In fact, we'll go over. This okay. is actually my console. We're going to go over here and I'm going to go up to let's go to the Minecraft starter back here. And I think it's, I think this one will help us out, but this is what we're talking about right over here. The supported languages, right? Exactly. Let me, let me, let me click a on that and tell us, tell us what's going on here. Cause there's a, there's a lot of information here, but it's, it's very logically laid out. Yeah. So there are three components to in-game localization. The first is interface and that refers to the menu, all the buttons within the a UI. game. Like, can I actually, <laughs> the UI? Yeah. Can I actually play it because it will be in the language, you know, my native language or perhaps your secondary language. Yep. Then audio refers to any spoken audio in the game and then subtitles against that audio. And you can see it for all of our console supported languages. Yeah, and you can kind of see here, I mean, Minecraft, so just... is, Minecraft is maybe a bad example that I chose because <laughs> there's not really any subtitles. There's more, there are more. <laughs> yeah. But there's, you know, this is a feature that I want to point out is, is, is you guys have been working on it for a little while. The team's been working on it for a little while and it's starting to roll out and you're going to see it more and more games. Is there another game maybe I should look mm -hmm. at here that uh, maybe is a better example? Yeah, let's take a look at some of the FIFA titles. Okay, yeah. Oh, FIFA, that's right. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, let's go in here and do that. And this is, again, this is a, t what do people need to do to, to get this feature? They don't really need to do anything. It's all back. It's all updated on nope. the back end, right? Yeah, it's, it's live. So yeah. they will see that information as soon as they click into the details of a PDP. So you can conduct a search like you just did. You're going to search for FIFA. You're going to go into the details section and then you actually see we call it a card but there's that card for supported languages and that modal pops up for you yeah. and what i love actually so this is a little even better example because it shows interface and audio checks what i love is that your console chosen language pops to that top so for you larry it shows english right for me if i had my console sent to french uh one all of this is going to be in french but it's going to show french at the top Right. So, so it's obviously knows what you, what you, what you have the system set to. And it says, Oh, this, exactly. is probably, this is probably what you want to see. So we'll give you that at the top. You can of course scroll down right. and see all the different, and there's a lot, there's a lot here. I mean, look at this, this goes, mm -hmm. kind of goes on forever. And this is really to support all of the, you know, all of the, the, the regions and countries around the world. Cause it's a lot of people forget, you know, in the United States, um, you know, there's, pretty you know there's a couple of predominant languages but around the world that's very different from region to region so tell us how, how your team approached that it was taking a look at right we're a global company global um platform here that that players love and how can we do right by our customers and without being able to tell this information prior to making a purchase or, or acquiring a piece of content it's it's tough and yeah. I think it detracts from how much you enjoy gaming. And so this means before they even get there, they, they can trust that this content will work for them, that, that they can play it. And then I think it adds to that sense of enjoyment. So yeah, I mean, it was really important for us to, oh, sorry. No, no, it's, it's great because I know that a lot of people I see it in my Twitter feed, I know you're on Twitter as well, I just popped your Twitter handle up, is a lot of people, yeah. uh, perhaps in some other countries, perhaps, maybe, you know, they want to understand, hey, what kind of experience am I getting with this particular title? Uh, yeah, okay, maybe it's English, but is it going to support you know, subtitles in German or subtitles in French or Arabic or, or Chinese and what version of, of Chinese? So there's a, there's a lot of a lot of information that you guys on the store team on the back end kind of have to figure out to make sure you're presenting it mm -hmm. to your point, making sure that customers understand what they're getting and they can maybe choose the right experience. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. And then there it's an immersive experience, right? I, I, I do speak French. I might want to play a game in French and I might want to play it with my kid next to me and have us learn together. Um, and I might need those subtitles because, you know, it's been a while. I could brush up on that a little bit. Right. Yeah, that's that's kind of cool. So it's it's really nifty. And as I said earlier, it's it's a 
it's a feature that you're rolling out uh, now, and it's it's kind of quietly rolling out. But as more and more games mm-hmm. adopt it, that that card, as you called it earlier, will just just appear yeah. right in, in in under the yep. details section. And the users don't have to take an update or anything like that. It's all dynamically pulled from the server. I mean, I don't want to use your language, but I'm using your language. <laughs> yeah, you got it. There's my engineering speak. It's 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 we got this on the back end, and then it'll just show to you. The the intent here is that the, you should not have to hunt for this information. You right. should be able to see it when you're looking at a at a product details page of a particular game that you are interested in. And I will uh, I'll put a link off in the show notes to this blog post. It's just about you know it's called I just got it just got easier to discover games on Xbox in your preferred <laughs> language. Now, Brianna, I want to talk to you about this because you you know you've been at Microsoft for a little while. Tell us about some of the other projects that you worked on because this is uh it's it's an interesting journey you've had. I I feel like I have had nine lives at Microsoft. Um, very privileged to have nine lives here and. Seemingly different stops along the way. I I mentioned I spoke French. That was actually part of my first job. I was on what was called the geopolitical team at the time. And I actually reviewed content to make sure, gaming content, no joke, to make sure that it was um, appropriate for uh, a French audience. And then I I merged into our certifications, our professional, um, Microsoft professional development certifications. And again, had kind of the localization and, um, uh, global view. And then from there, I had some time in Windows and that I managed a team that was focused on our documentation. So yeah. all about, you know, all of our internal tools and systems and, and my customers there were Windows developers. So wow, you can kind of see a similar thread. And now I'm in, <laughs> in gaming and uh, around, around making sure that the experience is great and, and customers know what they're getting and how to use our our platform. Now, it's interesting you say that because you started out, you talked about speaking French and you started, you know, talking about doing the, the geopole, as we call it internally, the geopole. And then, you know, you work with developers stuff, and then, you know, it kind of, you know, it merges your two worlds and here we are. <laughs> so you're, you're, yeah, like the, here we the, are. you're like the perfect person to be working on this feature. What, um, so this is something, as I said earlier, that we can expect to see more and more games that's going to start. It's just going to start getting, uh, you know, the feature is just going to start popping up more and more places, right? Yeah, absolutely. And we are looking at all of our, you know, all of our gaming endpoints, <clears throat> excuse me, we, you know, actually this is live right now, Larry, as well on our, on our Game Pass app. So you can see this in Game Pass as well. Oh, I, I didn't know that. I'll have, to go t- I'll have to go check the Game yeah, Pass surprise. app as well. Game Pass, you know, a lot of people really like Game Pass. So that's good to know that they can figure out what, what they're doing. And this, what's also great about this is it tells people what they're getting. But to your point, you know, I know that some people want to perhaps learn other languages or brush up on them. Maybe you can go into the into the game itself and switch to to French or German or some of the other supported languages that you'll see on the card to, you know, maybe practice some of your, your real world uh, language yeah. skills, right? <laughs> it's always fun to do. Yeah, that, so. exactly. Awesome stuff. Brianna Roberts, really appreciate you uh, showing. Let's show the card one more time. Very cool. You can find it uh, on some of the game detail pages as you go, you know, as you search for your game, just kind of scroll down. Uh, to the details section and go over to the right here and then you'll see supported language just click on a and that'll kind of pop it up and you can use your right stick to kind of scroll up and down this list how many how many languages are there there's like 20 something there, right 27 so those are the 27 console supported languages so we have asked uh collected this information against those languages right so there you go that's, the that's all there spanish mexico yeah. spanish spain swedish turkish Amazing. I appreciate it. Brianna Roberts, thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing what you're going to be doing with the store in the future as well. Thanks again for your time. Thank you so much, Larry. We're going to talk about this little guy here, the Xbox wireless <laughs> headset. Joining me today is Eric Garcia, who's the architect and product lead for this little guy. And uh, Eric, good to see you. Hi, nice to meet you. Let's let's talk about this because we announced this last month. It actually goes on sale uh, next week, uh, the 16th of March in most areas of, of the world. And uh, we're yep. excited about this. It's it's kind of sold out in a lot of areas, but I wanted to take a, a moment <laughs> to kind of do a deep dive on this this great device because I've had the opportunity. I don't get to talk a lot about things, but I've been testing this for quite some time, as you know, uh, as we all. Oh, that's have. awesome! But, but this has been a great device. I, I, can you walk us through? You know, tell us tell us about the device. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you know, if you look right behind me, we've. <laughs> We have built some over-the-year headsets in the past. Uh, you see the white one and the black one uh, right behind it. Uh, Xbox has never built a wireless uh, over-the-year gaming headset. Um, 
And it, it took a lot of work to get back into the space. And we've done controllers, uh, we've done headsets, but you know, putting the whole experience together, it was really something that we felt was very deserved uh, to a lot of the customers because it's that end-to-end -end experience that we wanted to ensure had great audio quality, but it really supported all those gaming sessions that people had. Yeah, it's funny because I'm, I'm an audio nerd, as a lot of people know, and I love, you know, all the I've got all the different headsets, all the manufacturers. We have some amazing third party partners that we deal with. But tell us about some of the things that we've done differently with this with the Xbox wireless headset, because there's a lot of cool things that go on here. And I got to tell you what I'm excited about. I mean, you're going to we're going to walk through some things. This, this thing's incredibly affordable. So let's walk through some of the highlights. Yeah, uh, you know, the, the when we first started the program, we looked at it and, and we had these kind of product pillars. And I think the main thing that we really wanted to go after was we wanted to make an amazing high value headset. Uh, it has to sound great, it has to feel great. But when you think of Xbox and Xbox accessories, it just has to work. It has to have that seamless experience. Uh, we wanted to build a headset that when you just open it, pull it out of the box, push the button, the pairing button, you push the pairing button in the console right here, it needs to connect smoothly, right? Uh, when you put on the audio, I think that's one of the things that we really kind of started figuring out is what is audio? There's countless hundreds of headsets out there, whether you want a wired headset, a wireless headset, one that goes directly to the console, some that have an adapter. Uh, so, you know, when people say, hey, this is the best, he best headset you can buy, uh, even if you're an audiophile, that's, that's not true because, uh, you know, my hearing, uh, I've listened to a lot of bass music over time, and so my hearing uh, is really poor in the freak in, in the low uh, bass frequency domain. And so, when we started looking into, you know, how do we make this headset great for everyone, we started thinking about, okay, well, you know, how do we create a customizable solution that feels great and that can hear great right. and works easily for everything. Yeah, it's it's interesting because you're absolutely right. I mean, I've been I was worked in radio for many years, and I have a similar situation where some of my some of my hearing bands are like, I don't quite hear that, or you know, we, we and to, but it doesn't even matter. The reality is, regardless of what we do, we all hear things slightly differently, and we all yep. like things to sound slightly differently. So let's walk us through because one actually one of the things, and I can't really show that, but when you when you turn on, well, maybe I can do this. Um, but when you turn the when you turn it on, no. You can kind of hear yep. it. it makes the same sound. I mean, you heard a little bit of it there, but it makes the same boot up sound as as the console, yeah. right? So that's that's kind of a nifty yeah. touch that that you guys add is. But there's a lot of those little fit and finish things in here, right? Yeah, it's you know when we went to go design this and and, and develop it, every single thing you can imagine. This is why this is a really really tough program because everything just has to be perfect. You know, the first time that you put something and deliver it into the market, it has to sound like the Xbox family. It has to look when you put this right beside a console, right, your X uh, or your controller. It has to look aesthetically like it's just all together. Um, all the gaps and steps, the color, the material, the finishes, uh, just how it moves around and the quality of the sounds that you hear. Uh, it just has to have that great Xbox experience. Um, and yeah, just looking at this, uh, I'm really, really proud of the team because we've spent countless, countless hours uh, working uh, across all different time zones to make sure that uh, when you push the button to turn it on, it sounds like the console. When you push it to pair, it sounds like it. When you mute, it's similar. The way that the uh, dials turn, uh, there's a lot of work that you know was done into what is it like from the Surface headphone and how do Surface headphones feel? And what is it as a lifestyle device? But then taking that knowledge and learning from all the other gaming headsets, okay, great, but what is a great headset for gaming? And that's a very different story. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was a lot of details that we had to go through to make sure it just, it was perfect. Now, a couple of things I wanna point out that you may not be able to tell here, but I mean, you talked about the dials. One side is 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 the party chat, you know, party and game balance, and the other one is the master volume. Yep. You can kind of see them on the back here. We've got these little iconic cues here. You can kind of see it right here, telling you which side, and then the other side over here. And that's and that's important. That's uh, and that's the power button right there, the pairing button. You can see it's this beautiful green. Uh, also on the inside, you said left and right, so you know exactly what ears go in which. Uh, and a lot of people are asking, hey, guess what? USB-C, which is great, <laughs> right? People love that. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
But the the other nifty touches is, for instance, the mute. You can kind of see this little. There's a little. I, I'm doing a terrible job of showing it, but there's a light on the front here that when you mute or yeah. unmute. And I'm doing a ter really terrible. Let's go to let's go to this instead because it's going to be better to show. It's at the end of the microphone so that when you're muted or unmuted, it's it's really clear and you get the audio tone tune as well, right? Yep, absolutely. And and again, that mute, even the location of the eye of the mute light. Uh, you know, when you're in a bright room like I am right now, I can still see it. Uh, when I'm in a dark room, I can also see it. But when you're in a dark room, you also don't want to see it because you don't want something out of your peripherals distracting you from what's going on. Right. Uh, so there's that is one of the many things that we designed so that you can customize. I know we'll talk about that stuff later in a bit. Yeah, and the, the other thing I noticed, I'm going to try to, again, when you mute, <laughs> yep. And it's it's a ter it's a, again it's in microphone it sounds much better in here but you you can kind of get it, you get this audio sense of mute and unmute which is something that as 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 a as a gamer and as an audio guy you or an audio person you always want to hear that it get okay I see it and I hear it. okay I'm muted honey what do you need right <laughs> so it's, you don't want to have those modes let's let's talk about yeah. uh, some of those cool customizations because one of the really neat things and I actually have my console here. this is a live demo which means anything can happen. Um, but we're going to go to my, my console here and, uh, you're going to see in just a minute, this is actually my console right here is that when I've already paired, but you can see my controller here, but there it is. There's the Xbox wireless headset. And now Eric, at this point, you're like, oh, okay, that's great. Okay. I got, I'm connected, but no, 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 this is the Mac. Nah. Click on configure. Tell us about all these different options in here. Cause this is really cool. So uh, one of the other things that, you know, a lot of headsets have a lot of these features too, right? Like being able to change the EQ. But I think the part that we really wanted to focus on is that seamless experience, right? Everything just has to be very simple, really straightforward because you're on the console to game, right? Or PC to game, to have fun. You're not here to be, you know, spending time trying to figure out how do you set things moving from one app to another. So in the accessories app, uh, we give uh, uh, several options to be able to customize and personalize this headset uh, to your liking, right? Sure. The, so this was our effort of making it great for everyone because everyone can tailor it to make it great for themselves. Uh, that equalizer, so I noticed that you were playing with the equalizer a minute ago. Uh, we came up with some different uh, options. What this really is giving is it gives people a, a, an opportunity to make the sound a little bit better for them. So in my case, for example, uh, I tend to listen more on the music side and use that as a start, but I like to increase that bass response because I really need to hear that a, a little bit more gain in that frequency band, the low band, the 125 hertz and below. Uh, but then also, as a lot of people, you know, when we say gaming, it's the game plus speech. Uh, and, and for lifestyle devices, that's kind of similar to what you would get from a movie. But the difference is that you need certain specific areas of audio to really pop. And it's, you know, from the one kilohertz to the four kilohertz, that's the speech domain. Like the majority of all of speech comes in that. That's why, for example, uh, telephones, um, they, they operate specifically in those bands. So we focused a lot on making sure that that frequency band, uh, you can raise it in the way that you can really have that speech pass through. But you don't want to lose that. And that's where, you know, Microsoft on our, our uh, signature was we wanted to start off with having a relatively flat response but add a little bit more bass because we've noticed that a lot of people who love certain headsets, um, bass is what they like. Yeah. And, and this allows you to tailor it so that you can get the right area of roughly where you want it to be. And then you have that little bass boost part on the bottom that you could just amp up a Max little bit and just out. get that great sound. <laughs> exactly. So, so when you're playing a first person shooter uh, with, uh, with, with modern uh, type uh, uh, arms, uh, you can hear those explosions, those low bass explosions and the footsteps, but you don't lose the mud, the sound and the muddiness by trying to just move everything up because you want it to sound great for what's what, how you're trying to coordinate with your team. Cool. Uh, so a lot of work went into just the EQ itself. All right, so the EQ is awesome. And then backing down here, now I don't know if we want to do this or we want to come back to this because the auto mute's really kind of cool. I'm really excited about that. <laughs> let, let, let's come back to that because we're going to go back to that in a moment. The mute light is yep. pretty straightforward. That's the light that we showed. You can kind of, you know, Eric said, if you, you can kind of put it on low, medium, or high. And then mic monitoring, which I call side tone. And you can kind of see over on the right-hand side. Why don't you explain this, Eric? Because this is really critical. It's one of those things that you don't realize yeah. you need until it's not there. Oh, you know, it's almost like, uh, so 
my daughter will go play and uh, she'll be gaming some of these uh, uh, first person shooters. She plays more first person in the shooters than I do. I like to do more of the racing games. Sure. Um, but when I, she used to use our uh, old headphones, she would just start yelling. And I'm just like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, why are you yelling so much? And I was like, oh, you know, it's actually it's cool. Like, she's really enjoying the game. Like, just let her be. And then as I started, we started developing this headset. We're like, oh, side tone, mic monitoring. Oh, so when I, you know, one of the first uh, builds, I, you know, put the headset on her and I was like, hey, you know, why don't you go ahead and uh, play? And, and all of a sudden it went from screaming and yelling because she couldn't hear that other people were hearing her. All of a sudden that feedback. So immediately when you speak, it goes right into the microphone. It doesn't get processed. It's the, it's literally the raw audio. So you don't get that latency. It just comes right back into your speaker, your headphone speaker, and you hear yourself speak. So it's another part, you know, you the mute button we talk about, the LED of the mute, the sound of the mute. Uh, this is just another feature that when you don't hear yourself going through, it kind of gives you another feedback of, hey, people can't hear me. But when you have it on high, you can hear yourself. So you kind of use your inside voice. Now, I noticed that we've got, we've got, you know, the mic monitoring, you can turn it. Uh, me high, medium, or low, or of course Eric's daughter's version, which is off. So, so you can still hear so if you don't like it. Oh, you it's turn now it on high. It's on high now. <laughs> now it's interesting is mic monitoring or side tone. I'm actually a nerd in this space, and I read a whole article about how, you know, back when the telephone was invented, how the engineers found exactly what you found, which is people were screaming, and they put a little bit of the side tone in, and it brought everybody down. So go if you want to read about that, that's kind of cool. Now up here, let's go to auto mute because this is an interesting. Piece. Feature. Tell us, tell us about this, Eric. Yeah, so actually, I'm I can uh, change it as well on my side. So uh, let's be clear, you're, is... talk, you're talking through the Xbox wireless headset right now because it also has Bluetooth, and you've connected it, paired it with your PC that we're doing this interview on, right? Yeah, actually, good point. Uh, so, and I do this a lot at work as well. So I will connect my headset to my PC, yep. and I'm using that through Bluetooth, and simultaneously, I have my console right beside me to the left. And I'm controlling everything through the console. So if you're gaming and taking those work calls, at least you can be rest assured that when you unmute yourself, they can't hear anything that's going on that you're doing other than on this work call. <laughs> so what, I, I think you have a demo for us, right? Yeah. Uh, so what I did is, uh, so I'll go ahead and uh, auto mute has been off the whole time. Uh, I will go ahead and turn it on. And I also, while I'm doing that, will turn on a fan because some people... If you're in a cold environment, you have a heater going on or something. Right. And then, unfortunately, this turned off, but we'll go ahead and put some audio in the background. Uh, you know, coincidentally, we have spatial audio and the uh, from your last with, video. With Jason, with Jason Ronald about spatial audio. So that's that's just right? imagine somebody behind you talking. So, so you, you have all these sounds going on right now, uh, and you're there gaming. And I stopped talking, right? It's I gone. don't think that everybody wants to hear the fan running here or hearing the gaming, the be people speaking the, the, behind those, me. Those are still going. The fan and the audio is still playing behind you. But because you, the auto mute does exactly that, it just basically shuts everything off, even though it's still going. So you could be playing in a room with a bunch of people, and we may not hear you. Yeah, and I think that was the whole point that we wanted to make for, as part of this feature. Uh, was if people now again this is just right here behind me but if you have someone in the room next door you have a roommate uh, a sibling or you're just trying to hide away from everybody and just kind of have your alone time but people are doing their own thing uh, it, it is a little frustrating to have to go back push the mute button uh, or trying to change something while you're playing a game it just makes it a little bit easier that you know that people who are on the far end they, they're not going to get annoyed with that background sound yeah and that's that's so as you if you when you stop talking they can still talk and that's that's kind of cool and, and you can and as i showed you here in the uh in the accessories app on the console you can control play around with it to decide what it sounds like and you've got obviously turn it off low medium and high so that's that's really helpful isn't it yeah and, and just to uh, specify on low medium high yeah. what that really means is is how sensitive the algorithm will kick in uh if it's on high it's basically going to take a lot for things to pass through. Uh, so I, if I probably bring this the, the sound a little bit closer and closer, it might eventually uh, let, let some of that audio pass through. But if you put it on low, 
when then because uh, you don't have much going on that that's probably good enough and i think the thing that it really also dictates on high medium low is also your voice if if yeah. you're coming in really loud uh, then you know you might low is fine but if yours or high is fine because it just makes sure that you know it takes a lot to pass through yeah. but if you uh, don't you know have a, a speak loud or you're just trying to be a little silent because you have a little one trying to fall asleep beside you right that's when you probably put it into the low setting because it's already going to be quiet anyways uh but it's also going to allow a your voice when you've kind of had a super quiet inside voice uh, to pass that through as well so that's and you guys do a lot of engineering work to try to enable it. that's that's really that's a, that's a cool that's a cool demo i mean that's and that again for the price point to get that and it's all kind of built in there that's amazing and you you know you and i were talking before we started and it was an interesting approach that that no two ears are the same you know whether it's whether it's my your ears anybody's ears everybody listening has a different set of ears and how they how they do that and then all these customization elements just really help you dial in how you want it to sound right Exactly, exactly. Because again, uh, people really, when, when they want something and it's Xbox, right? We have a lot of, you know, special and limited control edition controllers. Uh, we have the accessories, how you can customize things with your with either controller that you have. You know, this is just uh, being consistent in the message that we have. of We want to make everybody feel that this is tailored for them and made for them so that they can really go focus on the main thing, which is having fun. Now you had a uh, you know you had the show on there from a previous audio show, um, which about spatial audio, and I assume that these guys these guys this headset supports our spatial audio because it is a it yes. is our first part of it. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so when we first started developing it, one of the first questions we had was, uh, what's the frequency response that the algorithm normally expects, uh, and, and how do we make sure that the audio quality is great and consistent with that algorithm? And so that's where we, but, but on top of that, we also worked with a lot of other, the game developers and started asking them, hey, when you develop your audio and the music that you have uh, within the game, what is the response that you want? And so we, that's how we started with what is great audio quality. Um, and then being able to tailor it to each person so it's, it normalizes to each person's respective hearing, you know, that, that's where uh, we, had, we said, hey, this is great. Then when we started looking at spatial audio, it was, okay, but now that you can hear things great, you have to know where things are happening, where things are going on. Uh, so in my case, <laughs> in my case for game, for racing, it's really nice to know, hey, uh, where is the other motor that I'm racing against? Are they behind me? Do I start hearing them come a little bit to my left or to the right? right? Wait a minute. Are you third person? Are you in cockpit? Are you in front of the car? What's your view that you like to drive with when you're playing Forza? Tell us. <laughs> oh, overhead. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's <laughs> fine. So, it's, so anyway, so, you know, it's so you're to your point, go you, ahead. Can hear, you know, with the spatial audio, you can hear whether it's coming up in your right and whether you want to go left and so on and so forth. So you can really it helps. It helps everybody in every game. Yeah, it's it's just one of those things that I just when I was playing games as a, as a little kid. Right. We didn't have like the inside, all those different options. Right. Uh, and so I just got so used to seeing the car at that level. But, you know, when I'm driving at home, obviously, you know, we're in the driver's seat. Uh, so. Audio wise, I feel I love hearing where things are relative to me and also those small tidbits of if a person wants to pass you or something, they're going to start downshifting or upshifting, drafting you. Right. So all of those little characteristics, it really brings you into the game so that, you know, and kind of live that real world experience of when I'm racing someone, it really feels like I'm racing someone. Right. And that's why I also love Forza, because it really it, it, it kind of is built on that and that experience. And it just, it allows me to drive the cars I, <laughs> I don't get to in real life. <laughs> now we've got, uh, we talked about, you know, spatial audio and there's a, there's a Dolby Atmos offer that's available for, for these headsets. Can you tell us, because it's a limited time offer, tell us a little bit about that because that's actually really exciting as well. Yeah, no, that is actually really awesome too. So uh, we've partnered with Dolby. There's a limited activation. Uh, and as you have here, uh, you go to the Dolby Access. So if you don't have Dolby Access already, uh, you can download Dolby Access. And literally, once you open it up, uh, it'll recognize, hey, you have a uh, Xbox wireless headset. And so what you have on the top right-hand side, it'll say Xbox wireless headset, and it gives you an expiration. Mm -hmm. uh, when you do this for the first time, you'll get a little toast that pops up saying, hey, congratulations, you now have Dolby Atmos, and it's going to be there for... Uh, I believe uh, six months or so. 
Uh, and so that way you get either uh, Windows Sonic that comes automatically provided, but if you want to have that Dolby Atmos experience, uh, you get to try it for those six months to really kind of get a feel for, you know, what do you like? How does each work? And and have a great experience. And that's, a, again, if you purchase a headset uh, that'll, that's any 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 headset that's uh, purchased between now and September 30th, you get to try it out free for six months. And that's that's a great way to really yeah. hear it with your own ears. If, if you like this, you like Windows Sonic, and, and go back and listen to the show that Eric was playing behind him as a demo to hear more about the different audio settings that we have. It's, it's, it's an amazing, I mean, and the price point for this, I mean, it's, it's great. It, it <laughs> plugs in, it uses our, it's 99 99 in the U S it's available in many regions it uses USB C it uses, and let's, and I want to be very clear. It uses our wireless technology, the same technology that, you know, that we use to connect the controller. So you don't have to plug. There's no they're completely wireless, completely wireless. Um, you know, so you're playing and it's, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's low latency and it's just high reliability and it's, it's a great, it's a great, it's, I gotta tell you, Eric, this has become my primary device when I'm, when I'm playing Sea of Thieves and whatnot <laughs> all weekend. I mean, I love the, the chat, the, 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 the easy dials, everything about it is just great. So I want to, I want to thank you and, and the team for doing a great job with it. It's really exciting. Yeah. Uh, you know, there was thousands and thousands of hours that we put into this and asked a lot of people questions, interviews, uh, ranging from all different ages uh, and groups. Uh, so when we wanted to build this headset, we really, really wanted to make sure that everybody, no matter who you were, when you picked up this headset, you would have a great experience. Right. Because we just had to think about everybody who would get a controller, everybody who would want to use a headset, it needs to work. Yeah, it just needs to work. Now, I would just want to correct something. I said something I misspoke earlier. The limited activation on Dolby Atmos is free until September 30th of this year. So you got plenty of plenty of yeah. time to, to check that out. It's a it's a great little device. Let's, let's, let's in fact, let me bring up the device again. If I, I know I've got it here somewhere and it just kind of show off. It's a, it's a beautiful piece and it, it just belongs perfectly with the Xbox Series family. And this also, Eric, it's also that's actually a good point. This works also with Xbox Xbox One as well, correct? Yes, yes, it does. It uses the same uh, Xbox wireless protocol. Uh, it'll connect in the same way that you do with the controllers a and all of the different experiences and the touches, the sounds. Again, it feels, lives, breathes Xbox. Uh, actually, one of the things that I do like uh, is, and there's always those little, you know, nuggets uh, in the same way that you have the X, right? If you take off, you'll also get the green. Oh, interesting. Right. And so that. if you look really closely, and I'm not sure if you can see it here, if you look really, no, unfortunately oh, not. I but see. if you look really closely inside through the ear cup, you can kind of see that little bit of green inside. Yeah. So this yeah. Is, you can see that this is kind of, <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's a nifty touch. And you just kind of snap right on. That's really cool. And also, again, I also want to point out that you can have this paired to your console and your Bluetooth device, whether it's a mobile phone or computer. So you can kind of live in both worlds. As Eric said a little bit earlier, you can kind of, uh, you know, we're not going to say you should be gaming when you're on those Teams and Zooms call, but if you do, <laughs> we don't mind, right? <laughs> yeah, Larry, you know, I'll tell you this. As a parent, I have caught my uh, daughter uh, in class and playing on her uh, console at the same time. <laughs> She's okay. getting great grades. It, this is working for her, but I was like, wow, like, yeah, you really, you're really uh, exercising all these features. <laughs> hey, Dad, I'm using the product you made, so you can't hate me for that. <laughs> That and she said, "You did it yourself. I've seen you racing and in the meeting. So why can't I?" And I was like, well, you know, as long as you get good grades, you know, you're right. That's that's right. Keep it up the good work. Anyway, Eric Garcia, thank you so much, architect and product lead for the Xbox wireless headset. It's uh, pre-sale now. It's almost. It's pretty much sold out everywhere. It's going to go on sale the 16th. We'll continue to get more out there as possible. A lot of lot of excitement for this. It's uh, priced at US 99.99. Check your local retailers for the actual pricing and so forth. Eric, thanks so much for your time and uh, and and well done shipping the shipping the uh, headset. Thank you, Larry. I appreciate you. Y'all have a good day. Thank you so much, Brianna, and thanks so much, Eric for telling us all about the Xbox wireless headset coming out next week. And uh, you'll definitely want to keep an eye out. These have been selling pretty briskly, which uh, thank you for, for picking these up uh, ahead of time, but uh, they'll be arriving with you next week. And uh, send us your pictures if, as you pop it on. And if you want to tweet at us, uh, we'd love to see it. And yeah. uh, I've been enjoying uh, mine for some time. I know you have as well, Larry. And so uh, just the joining the wireless revolution. 
So that should not be, be the marketing tag. I just want to give a little behind the curtain look because Jeff, you and I talk about the fact, you know, when we're playing, when we're testing out hardware like like the headset, is what what this is the final version. What we start with is nowhere near this. It's 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 a very different experience in terms of they're testing mm -hmm. out materials and colors and fit and form factor and all sorts of things. So it's it's uh, it's great that, that you know this is. This is this is great that uh, I mean where it is now is amazing. So it's just to, just to let you know, because what we do is we test it internally in a lot of gamers. So a lot of what you know, you all are like, oh, I wish it does this or like that. We're, we're all yep. a lot of us are gamers here, and we test them for things like that. So we're we're filing bugs and giving feedback all the time. It's one of the fun parts of working here for sure. I thought this was. Oh yeah, I mean no, this is great. <laughs> this is this is uh, life changing. So. That's one way to play. Uh, it. Yeah, I guess. What, so, what else have you been playing? I know you were you had fired up Overwatch, um, uh, but you hadn't really played with it yet. So, what what are you? Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> is that Yakuza Kiwami? Why? Why? Yes, it is, Jeffrey. <laughs> Do go on. That's all. I just no. It's it's. I I don't want to say anything more than that. I'm just. I'm. I'm. I'm trying to. I'm just trying to spend some time with it because I think you and it's it's a great game and of course you know I know you're a, I believe you're you really like those games I can't recall. I I don't know what to think. My only response is Nani. Uh, so, <laughs> no, I mean, I, 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 today this yeah. week has been a tough week in terms of getting some gameplay in. So you know, Sea of Thieves and still going to Sea yeah. of Thieves, which those those they're, they're coming up on their three year anniversary, so that's exciting. Uh, uh, that uh, that uh, oh my god, that yeah. Yeah, that is right around this time. Right, so Sea of Thieves and the Little Nightmare. So I just haven't had a real chance to get back into anything else. But that's kind of what I've been doing. What have you? What have you been doing? Have you been? <laughs> well, I, I wrapped up um, uh, over the weekend. Uh, last weekend, I, I wrapped up Yakuza Four. Right, and it was so funny. Like the end is pretty intense, and there was a lot of like, I was really wailing on the controller. Uh, there was a lot of like, yeah, a lot of that. You know, really, you know. It's an action game. And to the point where my wife came downstairs and she's like, are you okay? Like, what are you, I'm just hearing a lot of like banging around. I, I there was a, some grappling and you had to wail on the, the no, Y button, the I think, or the A button to get out. Oh, this is, it's a mechanic as part of the, the whole game. And, um, and, and my, my hand was, I was feeling it the next day. Um, it's sort of like you play a fighting game for a long time. Like you have to like really be on it. And the timing has to be on it. And, right. Anyway, I completed it, but uh, I was standing up. I'm like, I had to get out of my chair and I'm like, come right. on. And uh, so I was like, you know, what? I'm going to take a break before jumping directly into, into Yakuza 5, which is a, a pretty lengthy game from what, uh, from what I'm told. So I said, oh, I'm going to play a quick little jaunt here. I'm going to try out Dragon Quest XI. The joke being that it's about a 80, 90 right. hour game. That's quite the joke. Uh, but uh, the last Dragon Quest I played was Dragon Quest VIII back on the PS2, that, that's how far back we're going, like which was an awesome, awesome, phenomenal game. And uh, Dragon Quest is really good. It's part of Xbox Game Pass. It looks good. It's got a lot of quality of life um, uh, updates. Those games did not always have that. It's great. I'm just like pausing and, you know, when I gotta go, if I can't get to a save point, I uh, just shut it off and I come back and quick resume to it, which is which is uh, even better. Yep. But the load times are super brisk uh, to the point where you can't. It's one of those ones where you can't read the tips, yeah, because it, it happens too quickly. Uh, I hope I'm not missing anything. I'm sure I'm not. Uh, but really, a, a really fun game, and uh, uh, I'll be spending a lot of time with that. If you played Yakuza Seven or Yakuza Like a Dragon, it constantly referring to Dragon Quest, right. and so that's why it's fun. It really it is. A lot like so it, obviously not taking place in modern day Japan. Me. You fell for their ploy. Totally. <laughs> Completely worked. Completely worked. So I would say if you play Dragon Quest and not Yakuza Like a Dragon, that should be your next game. If you just come off of Yakuza Like a Dragon, why don't you try out uh, Dragon Quest XI, uh, Definitive Edition, and it is on. I mean, there's not a lot of Dragon Quests on, on, on Xbox Game Pass. I'm pretty sure it's the only one. So uh, you won't have to like sort through. And I mean, that's the... I, the first one came out in 1987. Actually, right. it was my first RPG, and so it's uh, it's been a long journey, but it's good. Trying That's what I'm playing. What, trying to see what I'm playing here. Uh, well, you already went through that. Let me just shut this console off. I've got all these consoles. I got a console here. I got a console over there. You don't want to. You don't want to hear about my first world problems, do you? No. 
Anyway, um, so yeah, the, now do we went through some of the headlines. Do we go through all the headlines? I don't know. It's a couple, couple more here. Um, one is even, that I'm Force not even Horizon. I'm going to bring up the ticker this week. I'm just going to let you go. Okay, that's fine. So Force Horizon Four is available now on Steam. So of course, Force Horizon Four came out a few years ago at this point. Uh, maybe the best racing game ever made. That's just one man's opinion, uh, but definitely the one I've the spent the most of time many. with. I, I, I mean, I think it is, and a lot of people played it. So, of course, it's part of the uh, Xbox Game Pass on uh, console and on PC, and you can play it remotely and everything else uh, via the cloud. That being said, some PC gamers, they prefer Steam. Totally get that. And if you're one of those people, you can now buy uh, Forza Horizon 4. That joins other um, mainstay games such as Sea of Thieves, such as Halo the Master Chief Collection, which have done... Uh, have seen phenomenal success on Steam, and uh, they are now jo joined by Forza Horizon 4. So if uh, waiting for it has held you back from picking it up, this is the time. It's it's there. Uh, it Takes Two had a new trailer, which looked fun. So this is, you've talked about It Takes Two and had Joseph Ferris on uh, last week. Exactly. Uh, that is not Morse code. Uh, <laughs> very, very well handled, by the way, Larry. That was the SOS. So, thank. You. Oh, wow, very good. Uh, so uh, the game is, uh, is is really not that far off. Uh, it's coming out on March twenty sixth. So which that means, means, means we're we on the clock. Finish. Yeah, we we gotta get this yes. done. We gotta get this done. We're. I think. I feel like we're setting up for like the epic finale here uh, with a way out. But we had a lot Jeff, of fun. If you played you know, a way busting out, busting on a jail, we played finished, a little more. We just finished the uh, the farm scene. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. And the, the stuff that comes after it, actually, which I can't believe we finished that on our first try because I really thought you were going to, this is where you get the beep ready. I really thought we were going to the and I didn't think we had any chance of finishing up the and here we are. So we did. I, t and we I told you, remember I said, oh, we got this, we got this, but we were like one tick away from not having it. I we'll Yes, I, yes, exactly. We'll so, uh, now this looks like a that was like a much more serious and uh i don't know if it was rated rated m but it definitely was like more a uh, more serious content and this right. looks a lot more uh family friendly much like brothers a, a tale of two sons was they're getting a divorce i mean if you want to look at it that way <laughs> i mean there's that too so anyways uh last thing i want to bring up uh actually two things one was uh watchdogs legion uh, which we played through in November and uh, had uh, a lot of fun with. I really enjoyed that one. You played all the way through. You, you were going long. I'm you did. The ticker. <laughs> all right. Uh, they have an online mode that uh, launched this week. Cool. So um, you can you can join up with up to three other operatives, group of four, for open world co-op. Uh, it's a free update uh, across Xbox, and this online mode is separate from the single player campaign, and it takes place after the campaign. There's the title, but I'm given the details, Larry. I know, so I know. you build a new dead sex cell, recruiting people in the open world like you, you did during the, the main game, but there is a, apparently a quicker way to do it. You don't have to necessarily run missions. There's a new point series. There's a special co-op objectives. Um, so anyway, phenomenal game that we, yeah. we really enjoyed. Also did you, did was enhanced it? or optimized for series. Oh yeah, and okay. I did the post game That's right, I did uh, sort of there was yes. a cool mission that is given to you where you can delve into the history of one Sadness. of the most enduring characters. And it is, it's a sad story. Um, almost very like Black Mirror-ish in, yeah. in a way. Um, actually, very Black Mirror-ish. So anyway, uh, if you've already played through Watch Dogs, you enjoyed it, you want to go back to it, Watch Dogs Legion, the online mode is, is there. So jump in. The game is also uh, been marked down uh, the Gold Edition, which originally was 100 bucks, is now thirty nine ninety nine. So uh yeah it's there for you last thing i want to call out i don't know if you watched uh the colbert show on cbs on tuesday night i think it was tuesday night i don't think i did he, well he talked about the halo moa burger pringles and he was like pringles and microsoft announced yes that's correct uh and and so anyways uh if you listen to the kind of funny x cast you would have seen it uh as well as uh jordan payton legion uh you I'm might know him as legion actually, you knew I'm legion actually... you did a taco bell commercial with legion i did we did it right down here at the taco bell in, in seattle yeah it was, it was funny but so I, we, I just I'm he's a big halo they, fan they didn't send us anything over to try out what's going on 
That's probably on me. I should have brought that up. So well, why don't we see if we can have them for next week's show? There are Pringles out there. I think it's uh, I think it's a Walmart exclusive. You can check it out. Uh, but there are Moa Burger. So the Moa was this bird that is eaten on Reach, and so it's a bit of a, a bit of a deep cut for you Halo fans. Um, but you've never tasted one until now. So I heard it was uh, very umami. You know that sort of like that savory I taste. Want, no, 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 no. I want to do the. On, I want to do the. I, I'm not spoiling it. I haven't had it. That's the description. We'll, we'll, I got to we'll eat do one the too. On air testing next week. Are you going to make this happen? Are you going to get us cans of Pringles? Actually, I'm going to make this happen. So next week we're going to do it. The key, the key thing to keep in mind for you Pringles aficionados: these are the wavy Pringles, uh, and so that gives you more surface area for the flavor to reside on your tongue. The surface sure. area to volume ratio is very important. Sure, whatever you say. All right, that's the news. That's all you got. I felt like that was a pretty big week. It was a bit. No, there was a big week. I mean, anytime we're talking about new hardware, a headset, new new Pringles, your mouth, and frame rate boost. Uh, and, Beth- and Bethesda and, and oh, growing the family the by 40% or whatever. It's a $7 billion week. <laughs> you, don't, you don't see that every week, that's no, for sure. No, you don't. You really don't. Uh, it's, it, it makes a, I know, Jeff, you've worked at large companies and... I've been at Microsoft for a long time and it's you don't it's, work at much larger than Microsoft. Yeah, that's, you, you, that's and sure. you lose sight of the fact that, oh, we just bought a seven billion dollar what? It's just you, you lose track of some things like that because it's just the scale and scope of of the company is so big. But it's it's awesome to be able to be able to do that. And it's really exciting that Phil and the rest of the team and even Satya, they're very excited about what we're gonna do with gaming. Yes, sir. Yeah, down the line, it would be great to start bringing some of those folks onto the show. Oh, I've, I've already, I've already uh, reached it's out. Too soon? No, no, too, it's of not, course, yeah. it's actually not too soon. I've got a couple of them that I'm gonna, we're gonna work on getting on and see. What I want to do is I'm gonna start interviewing a bunch of the different community managers for the different franchises, just to make, just to remind people what what franchises are now part of the family. So, yeah, no, there's some really great I want people. Get, yeah, I want to get you to do uh, some that I've known well. for a long I time. Do them all. I want to get I, you to do some as well. I would love to do that. I would absolutely love to do that. All right, let's get uh, let's get going here, Jeff. It's been a, it's been a, again, as you said, a big show. So, okay, uh, yeah, because this is the time of the show where we usually end up talking about uh, uh, bidets, and Toilets, maybe we skip that this week. Electric cars, uh, well, Pringles, Pringles. I can't believe you didn't get us any Pringles. I I was busy trying to get it to other people. I didn't even. I'm very selfless when it comes to snacks. Also, I know I will just eat the whole tin in one go, and I will hate myself for it. So, what's your, fa- what's your um, favorite? Uh, what's your favorite uh, potato chip? I mean, we talked about the mo ones. I haven't tasted those yet, so they may be my favorite. All right. So I, this is a recent or change. Crisps, I, uh, crisps, as they call them in the UK uh, and around the world. Uh, so there's these Oregon chips. Uh, they're made in Oregon. I didn't know they grew potatoes in Oregon, but I learned a lot. And and it makes sense. It borders Idaho. Called Spud Love. Oh yeah. And they are. I used to love the kettle chips. Those were my number one choice. Usually the black pepper or the salt and vinegar ones. Spud Love. Uh, they're like super crunchy, super thick. They just taste incredible. And uh, I usually get salt and vinegar or black pepper, uh, like I I just love to do. And those have taken the cake. Actually, did you ever go to Schlotsky's back in the day? Of course I did. You took me to Schlotsky's. You're yeah. a big Schlotsky's. Guy. I did take you to Schlotsky's. Probably in Austin. Yeah. Uh, they had a made, they, those were probably my all time favorite chips. They had the most like aggressively sour salt and vinegar chips. Yeah. But now Spud Love has taken, has taken my heart. Where do I get those? Uh, I find them at the, the one of the markets near store. here. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know if they're everywhere. Check your, they might, they might be regional. Uh, you know, sometimes a lot of chips are regional. Like this you don't see way, like, but... uh, you don't see Utz chips out here. Right yeah, or hers have, yeah, if or you're from Philly. Line. You See, I've never even heard of this. Yeah, you Did you know hers? H e r r s. That was what I grew up eating because th- that was a Philly-ish yeah. brand, and uh, yeah, hers was big. Um, State Line was one up in Connecticut, which is a uh, Connecticut. No, oh, see, I, I'd never heard of them. Uh, what are the other one? What was the one that came in the tin in Philadelphia? Remember those Charles Charles chips? I've never had that before. Really? Oh, well, we, no. We're gonna go down a whole. We're gonna get on a whole potato chip away, but we'll figure that part out. So, <clears throat> right, that, that's that's part of our that's part of our other podcast, uh, snacking <laughs> snacking monthly. Happy crunchy, <laughs> happy crunchy is the one where we talk about potato chips and life in Japan. So. 
they have some good chips over there too. That's for sure. And you can get this, them now. I was reading this article about all the there's there's one vending machine in Japan for every twenty three people. I mean, I believe it based on what I've seen. And right. their vending machines do stuff that our vending machines could not even Dream. comprehend. Of. Like out of the same vending machine, you can get something that's hot and something that's cold. And sometimes it'll even be the same thing that can be getting gotten hot and cold. And like I'm like, how, how? And it's not even a big vending machine. Our vending machines have a lot of catching oh, up. And to the do. other thing, it's usually down a side alley somewhere, right? It's just sometimes. Thing. It's just you know, my favorite thing to get. Oh, that was the canned coffee, Boss Coffee. A big right, fan of Boss Coffee. I, know you were. We used um, get, I used to get those in Seven yeah. Eleven over there. Yeah, yeah, you can do that too. Uh, but you're you're never more than like you know a thirty second walk from a can of Boss Coffee, and it's only Boss. like a hundred yen, which or is like a dollar. Place? And what was the other place? We, oh, Lawson's. Lawson's. La <laughs> also, I mean, if we're, if we're gonna get on this. Our convenience stores do not hold a candle to Japanese convenience stores. Like you go in there, it smells delicious because they have these, um, oh, I'm forgetting the name of, but there's sort of like these sort of uh, uh, containers with essentially kind of like a stew of like yeah. individual like fish balls and, and fried tofu things and all these things that you can pull out of it. And they're just, they taste amazing. There's a name for it. It's there, escaping no, me right no, now. The, the convenience stores over there are the models of efficiency. You know, they're just, they're just so good. And it, this is, and if you play the Yakuza games, you get to see this. It's almost like stepping into a Lawson's. I know, uh, it's I called a Popo in, in the Yakuza games. And even just like the, the sounds, they're well staffed. I mean, even some of the same stores we have here over there. I Can you tell I really miss going to Japan? I do too. It's, uh, I do too. I was, we were supposed to go this year and obvious for, for very good reasons. We, we have not, but um, well, now as that soon we, as now we can. Now that we have Bethesda and we have more studios over there, let's... let's... Saddle up, gang. Tango Game Works. Surely you want me to come visit for some reason. Tango. I would. I will do anything. We are Tango oh, that would be ready. Amazing. Yes. All right. Do you want to? Do you want to tell people how they can find the show and what they should do to make sure they stay? Of engaged? course. Of course. We're available at anywhere podcasts are found. So if you're listening to this on uh, actually, uh, Spotify or listen to your better podcasts are found. <laughs> not the not the lower quality podcast. Good to know. Uh, but. If you uh, if if you want to see us for some reason, you can find us on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks to the the audience that we're building there, you can subscribe to us at uh, youtube.com slash Major Nelson. And uh, yes, exactly. And uh, wait, is it is it not slash Major Nelson? I don't know. I think I just have my last name. Just go to my blog, really? MajorNelson.com. Ah, so that's just what I know. It's just you could search for Major Nelson Podcast. Like, subscribe, ring the bell. Please leave a comment. We'd love to interact with you there. Yeah, I love the comments. We love the comments. We love the comments from the uh, the International Women's Show. Don't forget to listen to that or watch it. Great, uh, great stories from some of the um, just a few, a few of the amazing ladies we have here at Xbox. We'll be doing some more shows, and make sure you tune into next week for the cool takeover that we're doing on uh, on, on the Twitch channel. Right? How do they find the Twitch channel, Jeff? Uh, yeah, Twitch dot TV slash Xbox. Pretty popular. Mm -hmm. I would go ahead and hit follow this way. You don't have to. I mean. If you want to turn notifications on, by all means, but uh, you can also watch it directly from your Xbox. Download the Twitch app, and the people that you follow, uh, you can even get a toast notification that will pop up if that's what you like. And you're right, youtube.com slash HRYB. I always just would type in Major Nelson. It would pop up there. That's fine. I think I can uh, figure it out both. But regardless, love to have you. Of course, find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google, whatever they call their thing over soundcloud there. you do have a soundcloud they so do. if you ever say something viral you can reply and go oh, yeah i do have a soundcloud i do it's xbox I can't believe you yeah in fact you say something viral every week you know normally when you're giving out codes on a friday right i invariably on friday afternoon i'll go and i'll look at trending topics as i as i tend to do every time i have a, a free minute and it's it'll say free code friday pot what do you say free code friday contest is what it yeah, says right. and and I look, who's at the top xbox is major nelson just having a little bit of fun over there on twitter you can find me at major nelson just like jeff said you can see right here on the screen or at jeff rubenstein for the complaints hit him up there and you, you tend to so thank you all right gang jeff if you have time next week i'd love to have you back i would love to be here thank you all right, gang. We'll we say this guys. every week, but we'll see you guys next week. Uh, we'll have some more interviews, some more fun, some more gaming news, and more importantly, we're here for you, and we'll see you next week. Bye, bye, everybody. Thank you.